our station, our talents and our people. Well, there came a sound from heaven Was a mighty rushing wind Well, it filled every heart with singing And it gave them peace within Well, the prophet gave this promise He said the Spirit shall descend And from your innermost being A river will come over You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Tune in to the leading internet radio station in the mother city, Radio Yesterova. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioyesterova.co.za.
her life was so ruined and so wasted. Her soul was lost as well. But then she met, she met the master. And then he said, if you'll drink of this one, you'll never thirst again. Sing the song now. Listening to Radio Yesterova. Bless you and welcome to this evening's broadcast of the study in the word. This is Evangelist Alma addressing you from the studios of Radio Easter River in Cape Town, South Africa. May the Lord bless you and may He be with you. Yes, once again, it's a privilege for us to gather around God's Word and just to meet in such a fashion. And that is what it's all about. It's about God's Word. It is not about the Word of a man, but it's about the Word of God. Now, if you look to me, you will stumble. Yes, if you take my Word... My words will fail because my words are the words of a man. But if you look to God's word, God's word can never fail. The Bible says that heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never fail. So that is what we look up to, and that is the word of God. And I believe that the word of God is the infallible, inspired, uncorrected Bible. Yes, so the word of God in its original form, is found in the Bible. And that is what I put my hope, my faith, and my trust in. That is what I base my eternal destination upon. It is the Scripture, yes. The Scripture is always right. And let God be true, and let every man be a liar. So we're just grateful for God for allowing us and giving us this opportunity that we can get in such a fashion just to hear what God has to say in His Word. Now, if you have your Bibles already, you can turn with me, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter number 13, and we shall read from verse 1. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came by and devoured them. Some fell upon the stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, they were withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprung up and choked them. And other fell into ground, 
good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Let us close our eyes for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I come to your throne of mercy through the master's name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm not worthy, and no one in heaven or on earth is worthy. But the Bible says that the lamb, the lion out of the tribe of Judah, he is worthy to open the book and to break the seals thereof. And Lord, only you can give divine revelation. Only you are able to make us to understand. Only you can open the word. And I just pray that you will do the same, Lord, that you will just open the word for each and every listener. And may you just bless us in abundance, Lord. Cleanse and purify us of all sins and iniquities. You said that though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. They be, though they be red like purple or like crimson, they shall be white as wool. And may your precious blood just cover me and every other listener, Lord, and purify and cleanse us and help us to speak only the oracles of God and make the hearts receptive to even receive. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Now I greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So we want to speak this evening about the parable of the sower. Now we know that Jesus spoke many times in parables. Yes. And we know that this also happened, that the scripture might be fulfilled, that he will speak unto them in parables and that he would make known things that were hidden since the foundation of the world. Now many times when Jesus spoke in such a fashion, it was very mysterious, mysterious, because he used symbols, yes. He used things in the natural to convey a spiritual message. And many times people were boggled and puzzled. They could not comprehend what it was that Jesus was saying. And Jesus answered his disciples because they themselves, they could not understand all these things. And the Bible says the following, and the disciples came and asked unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them it is not given. For so whosoever have, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever have not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they are seeing not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are full, are dull of hearing, and the eyes they are they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily they say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. So there were people that Jesus spoke in parables and thus he had to do also so that the scripture might be fulfilled. So there are those people that have eyes but they cannot see, they have ears but they cannot hear. So when it comes to the seeing and the hearing, it does not refer to the natural but to the spiritual. And many people could not comprehend what Jesus was saying and many times Jesus was mis misunderstood in what he was saying. Yes, and these misunderstandings, it stirred great trouble among the people. There was a time that Jesus said that build this temple down and I'll rebuild it in three days. And they thought that he was referring to the literal temple which took six, 46 years to complete. But Jesus was not speaking about the literal physical temple which was made of brick and stone and of uh, mud but Jesus was referring to the temple of his body yes and many times they misunderstood Jesus and throughout the Bible we see that God has been misunderstood throughout the ages because God is a God of simplicity and he reveals himself in simplicity Yes, Jesus even says this in the Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 11. I thank thee, Father, O Lord of heaven, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed it to babes such as would learn. So the word of God is hidden to the wise people, to those that have knowledge and understanding, those that are educated and advanced, and uh, those that are knowledgeable. But many times God comes to simple people, people that are ignorant and unlearned. The Bible says, says that Peter and James were the people perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned but they perceived that they were being 
with Jesus, yes. And we see, for instance, with the shepherds, with the birth of Jesus, the angels announced the tiding or the, the announcement. They made it to the shepherds that were in the field. And they did not go to the theologians and the priests and the pastors and those that were responsible for religious duties. And that is many times how God operates. God manifests himself in simplicity, yes. He makes himself known in humility and in simplicity. Even with the birth of Jesus, we see him being born in a stable over a manure pile we see jesus coming in this world in a very humble way and that is how god reveals himself in humility and in simplicity <clears throat> but when it comes to the greater things of god many times the people that are technologically and educationally more advanced they many times miss it by a million miles and they do not comprehend what it is that God is really speaking about to us in his word. Yes, and God is great. God is a great God, but he reveals himself in simplicity. And many people could not understand the sayings of Jesus, but there were those that were chosen, those that were elected, those whom Jesus knew by foreknowledge, <coughs> and he revealed the secrets and the mysteries unto them. Now, there are various parables in the Bible, parables that Jesus spoke about. And there were parables where Jesus gave the interpretation to the disciples, and there were those parables that Jesus kept that way. Yes, so God has his time and season for revealing things. We see, for instance, in the book of Daniel chapter 12, that Daniel was instructed to seal the book, to shut it up, because it will the contents of the book will only be revealed at the time of the end hallelujah and we see that many mysteries have been revealed at the time of the end it was not meant to be revealed during those previous uh, dispensations or decades or centuries but god has his time and jesus even said that it is not unto us to know the times and the seasons which the father has determined by his own will so god reveals things in his own way in his own time hallelujah and it was not meant for daniel and the people that lived in his dispensation dispensation to know the truths that were spoken of back then but god revealed it and shut it up uh, to be revealed in the time of the end which is the time that we are living in now which is the end time hallelujah and it is in these days that God is really, really opening up his word and giving a revelation, a revelation that comes through the Holy Spirit. And when it comes to revelation, we know that the revelation will never be contrary to the written word. But whatever God reveals will be in line with the word. It will stick in as a hand fits into a glove. So God cannot can contradict himself, yes, but God keeps his word, God keeps his covenant, God sticks to what he says. God will not say one thing now and then say something contrary later. And many times people come up with the revelations which they claim they have received from God. But when these revelations are given the word test, when it is being compared to what the scripture says, then many times these revelations are exposed as foolishness. Yes, it is exposed as originating from the pits of hell because whatever does not agree with God comes from the devil whatever is not written in the Bible that is contrary to the Bible originates from Satan and when it comes to the mysteries of the kingdom of God yes we see that God revealed it unto his elect unto those that he had chose he had chosen and many sayings that Jesus said people did not comprehend people did not know what he was talking about but in due time we see Jesus revealing and taking the disciples privately and telling them what it meant and here we see a very beautiful example in the parable of the sower and the disciples were even wondering what this was all about and jesus made it known unto them not unto the multitudes but jesus spoke unto his own to those that were his true followers and he said hear you therefore the parable of the sower when any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart thus is he which received the seed by the wayside but he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, <coughs> and anon with joy received it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, 
By and by is offended. He also that received the seed among the thorns is he that receiveth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and becometh unfruitful. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while man slept, his enemies came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence have it tears? He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tears, you root up also the weed with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye <coughs> together first the tears, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the weed into my barn. So here we see Jesus <coughs> giving a further parable. Yes, Jesus speaking even further, but Jesus also giving us the interpretation, giving us the meaning of what the parable is really about. Now the sower sows the seed, and we find the answer of what the seed is in Luke chapter 8 verse 11, where Jesus speaks about the sower sows the seed, and the seed is the word of God. Yes, and the, the, the one that is sowing the seed is the Son of Man. Now we know that the Son of Man is a title, a title that Jesus uh, spoke about many times that refers to no one else than himself. So the sower is Jesus and he sows the word. The seed is the word. It is not a literal seed as you find many seeds of trees and plants, but it, it refers to the word of God, the scripture. And Jesus was sowing the seed, yes. And then we see that the seed fell on different grounds. And so it is even today when it comes to the preaching of the gospel that the gospel is being preached and different people are sitting in different audiences and it falls on different type of people's ears. Yes, there are those that it falls on the the rocks, the stony places, and it is those that hear the word, but then Satan comes and snatches it, it steals it from them. Then there are those on, on whom the seed falls in the, as we read, in the stony places, yes, or in the thorns, and it is those that they receive the word with gladness, but afterwards there cometh persecutions or tribulations because of the word. It is the same people that then betrays the word yes because of riches or because of desires or because of persecutions there's something that comes and offends and causes a stumbling and such people then turn away from from following jesus christ but jesus also made it very clear that there are those on whom it falls on the good ground yes it is those that receive the word in their hearts, yes, and then they bring forth fruit. These are those that not just listen to the word, but they respond to the word, that react to the word, and it actually puts their faith in action when it comes to the word. These are those that become converts. Now, if you read in First Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul was also speaking in this manner. Yes, he was speaking about how that the one was sowing and how that the one was uh, wetting, but it is God that causes the growth. And it is only God that convict a person, that can convict a person and change an individual's heart and mind when the word of God is being preached. It is the Holy Spirit that moves, that brings about the conviction in the heart of an individual and that brings about a conversion so that the individual that is the hearer of the word becomes the receiver of the word and also the doer of the word. The Holy Spirit works while the word of God is being preached and being ministered to to an audience, yes. And here we see that Jesus made known there are many people that hears the word of God and they receive the word of God, but then there are those that turn away. Yes, there is those that uh, for a while they last, yes, and then after a while they fall away. They become backslidden and they, they leave the ways of God. Now we're going to take a break quickly. We're going to listen to the song, There's a River. 
After that, we list, we continue to the broadcast of the mess, uh, study in the Word, and we'll speak about the parable of the sower again. God bless you. You are listening to Radio Yesterova. Radio Yesterova. Our station, our talent, our people. Oh, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing oh mighty wind oh it filled every heart with singing And it gave them peace within Oh yes, the prophet gave the promise Thank God The Spirit shall descend And from their inner most being A river with no end There is a river Oh yes it is That flows from deep within There is a fountain That frees the soul from sin says come come to these waters there is a land supply there is a river that you are listening to Radio Easter. Thank 
thank God that frees the soul from sin. He still says, why don't you come? Now, God bless you and welcome back to this evening's broadcast of Studying the Word. So, we're speaking tonight about the parable of the sower and the seed. Now, Jesus giving a description of the sower, which is himself, and the seed being the word that he sows, the word of God. And then we see the seed falling in four different places. Some falling by the wayside, some falling by stony places, some falling by thorny places, and then there is the seed that falls on the good ground. Now, when it comes to the wayside, we see that it is them that Satan just snatches the word out of their heart. Many times people will listen to a sermon or a preaching, and then they will just immediately forget about it. Yes, and that is how the devil steals the word out of their heart. And the Bible also calls the devil that he is a thief and that he is a robber. And then we see, of course, those uh, on whom it falls on the stony places. And Jesus even gives the interpretation of them. He says, it is those that hear the word of God and understandeth it not. Yes, Jesus says, there are also those that... Uh, 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 the word falls uh, on the thorny places, yes. And when it comes to the thorny places, it is the snares that comes. The snares which is tribulation. There are sometimes persecutions that follows the, uh, the word of God, yes. And whoever embraces the word of God will also be persecuted. The Bible says in Second Timothy chapter 3 that whosoever shall love God in Christ Jesus shall face persecution, shall suffer persecutions. And that is how it is if you truly follow Jesus, that persecutions is sure to come your way. And tribulations also and all sorts of bad ill treatment will follow your way. Because the people of this world hate the people of the kingdom of God. Yes, and the systems of this world is also against the systems of the kingdom of God. And we see those that have no root in themselves. Yes, this, those that, that uh, the seed falls into the stony places. They hear the word, they rejoice, but yes, they have no root in themselves. Yes, but then there are also those that Jesus says that the seed falls into good ground. Yes. And it is those that bring forth fruit. <coughs> and it is those that embrace the word of God. And also they action the word of God in their lives. They don't just hear it, but they actually do it. And it is those that Jesus classified that bring forth fruit. Yes, the seed falls on the right ground and it brings forth the harvest. It brings forth a conversion of people unto the Lord. Yes, now when it comes to the seed, we know that the seed is the word of God. Nothing can change that. Luke eleven, Luke eight verse eleven clearly states it, that the seed is the word of God. Now every seed brings forth after its own kind. The Bible says that in Genesis chapter one. So if the word of God is being preached, it will produce the word of God. If you look in the book of Luke chapter one, we see that the angel brought the glad tidings unto Mary. The word that she is pregnant by the Holy Ghost and she will bring forth a son and should call his name Jesus. Yes. Now we see that she received the seed, which is the word. She received it into a heart and then it manifested through a womb. Now if you also receive the word of God in your heart, it will manifest in your life. Hallelujah. And that is what it was with Mary. She received the true seed and she brought forth the true seed. Hallelujah. If you receive the true word of God, you will also produce the true word of God. That is as clear as day is. Yes. That is what the Bible teaches us. That every seed <coughs> shall bring forth after 
his own kind hallelujah so when the sower sows the seed now the sower can also refer to the preacher because jesus commanded in matthew chapter 8 28 and also mark chapter 16 that we should go therefore and teach all nations that we should also go and preach the gospel to every creature so preachers are also sowers of the word no man can con uh, convert you and no man can force you to conversion but it is the preacher's duty to only preach the word the holy spirit moves when the word is being preached and it brings about the conviction in the people's lives the holy spirit brings the that absolute convincing into the heart of the year that he or she is a sinner and is guilty and deserves death hell and condemnation but also the glorious news that jesus christ died for that soul and through jesus christ there is redemption salvation and forgiveness of sins and everlasting life available it is the holy spirit that moves it is the holy spirit that quickens the word of god and makes it real to the year the preacher is only a vessel an instrument a tool that god uses to to address people yes a preacher is not more than a man but the preacher is just a man yes the bible makes it very clear and we should never exalt a preacher to a pedestal to a place of exaltation or a throne or a hierarchy that is higher than god or above human levels but a preacher remains a man the bible says that those to whom the word of god came they were called gods god said you are gods but you shall die like men and we cannot take that out of the equation that they shall die like men because they are men the bible says that god gave gifts unto men hallelujah ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 he says that when jesus ascended up yes he took captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men he doesn't say unto women or unto animals or something else but it specifically says to the male it says he gave gifts unto men and he gave some to be apostles some to be prophets evangelists teachers pastors but the bible is plain that he gave it unto men that is the scripture that is thus saith the lord it's written in the bible we cannot alter or change that paul even wrote to timothy in first timothy chapter 2 that he does not allow a woman to teach or to to usurp authority over man that she but she should be in silence even in first corinthians chapter 14 he made it very plain the women are to be silent in the churches and to be in submission and it is it is not a nice thing for them to speak in the church but they should be silent and if they want to learn something they should ask their own husbands at home but it is really the male figure yes and god gave gifts unto men so men of god yes they can only preach the word of god they can only say what god says yes and that should be the example for all preachers to only say what god says we read in second chronicles 18 about the prophet by the name of micaiah of which the bible says that he bear witness and he said only what god says that i will say and that is what a preacher says he should say only what god says he must say and what god says is in the bible not outside of the bible above the bible but it is written in the bible and god speaks through the bible the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 1 that god who in sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to the fathers through the prophets hath in these last they spoken to us through his son and who is his son jesus christ and who is jesus christ john chapter 1 from verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god yes god speaks through his word god does not speak through sources outside of his word above his word but god speaks in within the boundaries of his word yes and when it comes to the parable of the sower we see that the sower only sows the seed yes paul even says in first Corinthians chapter 3 that he napolis it was the one sowing it was the one making weight but it is god that gives the increase it is god that gives the growth yes it is the working of god himself salvation is not the work of a man but the work of god god brings about the conviction and god gives the redemption god gives the salvation god gives everlasting life it's a work of god is an act of god is not an act of man yes it is supernatural it is from above even a new birth is not something that you can merit or earn but it is something that god grants unto you by his grace yes now these are clear biblical truths so when it comes to this parable of the sower 
we see that there is a harvest and that harvest will be at the end of the world jesus even made it very plain that those that are the reapers they are the angels they are the ones that will really remove those that do iniquity those that that uh, are evil within the kingdom of god they are angels are the ones that will be the reapers now the harvest is the end of the world that is what jesus said so we see that there will come a day where jesus himself as the lord of the harvest he will do the separation and he will take the wheat into his storage hallelujah and we see that the tears will be burned now the tears the bible says are those that work the iniquity yes here we even have in matthew chapter 13 the interpretation of the tears then jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field he answered and said unto them he that sow the good seed is the son of man the field is the world the good seed are the children of the kingdom but the tares are the children of the wicked one the enemy that sowed them is the devil the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels as therefore the tares are gathered and burnt in fire so shall it be in the end of this world the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend in them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as a son in the kingdom of their father who have ears to hear let him hear now we don't need to add or take away anything from that because jesus gave the interpretation he made it very clear who is the sower who is this uh, person which is the devil that sowed this tears what the the harvest is about the end of the world the reapers being in angels so god himself will do the separation it is not our duty to send people to hell but god himself is a judge and god knows his own jesus says in john chapter 10 that i know my own and i am known of them so jesus himself will do the separation yes and there are those in the kingdom of god which are classified as tears yes as stumbling blocks as those that do iniquity there are evil people within the church ranks there are evil people within the religious world there are those that work iniquity there are those which the bible says that they are the children of the devil yes now it's a harsh saying but jesus says but the tears are the children of the wicked one so just as there are children of god there's also children of the devil just as there is the good seed there is also the tears now the tears they cannot be heirs together with the wheat yes they cannot inherit eternal life together but we see that the tears will be separated at some point and god himself does the separation and we see that the wheat shall be gathered into the heavenly garner hallelujah god will take it unto himself his own yes and it will happen at that great event which is called the rapture of the church the taking away of god's people from this planet and god will take them to be with him jesus makes a promise in john chapter 14 he says in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you so that you can also be where i am hallelujah so there will come a day there will come an hour when the trumpet will sound and that those that are the wheat of god shall be gathered into his heavenly garner hallelujah god will assemble those unto himself that are his own but there are also those within the religious world within the church ranks that are not of god and the bible calls them the tares and they are in the kingdom of god now we see right from the very beginning that there were two seeds in genesis chapter 3 god told the, <coughs> the serpent i will put enmity or god said to the woman i will put enmity between your seed and his seed or unto the serpent i will uh, put enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman so we see there's a seed of the woman there's a seed of the serpent and we see even what uh jacob and esau or let's start with cain and abel we see once again two seeds we see that cain the bible says in first john chapter 3 was of that wicked one yes and we but the bible says that abel is called the righteous abel so the one is of the wicked one and the one is righteous hallelujah and the bible even says that god will avenge all the blood of the saints and martyrs from abel hallelujah if you read matthew chapter 23 from righteous abel unto zechariah that was killed between the temple and the altar 
Yes. So there are those that are the righteous and then there are those that are the wicked. And if you notice very closely that Cain and Abel were both religious, they both believed in God, they both brought sacrifices to God, but the one sacrifice was rejected and the other sacrifice was accepted. So it starts right there and we continue throughout the Bible. We see, for instance, Jacob and Esau. If you read Malachi chapter 1, the Bible says that Jacob I have loved and Esau I have hated. And then you go into the Romans chapter 9, the Bible speaks, how did God harden the heart of Pharaoh? And how did he told Moses, I will be merciful unto whom I will be merciful? Yes. And we see right there between Moses also and Pharaoh, the one being righteous, the one being wicked. And so we see throughout the Bible, even in this day and age, there is the righteous and there is the wicked. Yes, there's nothing in between. If something is in between, it is hypocritical in nature. But there are the righteous people and then there are the unrighteous people. There is light, there is darkness, there is good, there is evil, there is right, there is wrong. There are two different seas, there are two different kinds of people. There are those that are the children of God and then there are those that are called children of devil of the devil then the bible says in john chapter 1 to those that have accepted jesus christ to them he gave power to become the sons of god hallelujah and if we go into the book of acts chapter 13 we see the apostle paul addressing elias or elimas which was a sorcerer and he addressed him with these words thou child of the devil and we see even jesus in john chapter 8 telling the Pharisees or the religious leaders that they are of their father, the devil. So they are children of the devil and they are children of God. But we see that God himself, he is the one that will do the separation. Yes, God does the sowing, God does the reaping. The Bible calls him the Lord of the harvest. Hallelujah. And what you need to do, do as a listener is to just open the womb of your heart for the word of God. Just receive the word of God into your heart and it will bring forth the word of God. There are those that receive the true seed and they produce the true seed. Then there are those that receive strange seed, some other seed, another gospel, another proclamation another message and they produce every seed of its own kind but at the harvest it will be god that separates the two from each other now may the lord bless you and i trust and hope that you have gained from this message tonight and may the lord give you further insight in it let us close our eyes dear lord thank you for allowing me once again to speak on on this platform in this program and May your word not return unto your void, Lord, even as you've said in your word. But may it reach the ends of the earth. May the seed just be sown, Lord. And may you just do the rest. I've done my best, Lord. I've come here. I've preached your word. And now you do the rest, Lord. You touch the hearts and lives of the people. And may all those that are ordained to eternal life, may they hear, Lord, and may they be saved. Bless us in abundance, Lord. Don't leave us or forsake us and just be with us. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now my contact number is 083-670-4657. 083-670-4657. May the Lord bless you until the next time as I go off the air. We listen to that song, There Is A River. God bless you. You are listening to Radio Easter River. Radio Easter River. Our station, our talent, our people. Oh, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing, oh, a mighty wind. Oh, it filled every heart with singing And it gave them peace within Oh, yes, the prophet gave the promise Thank God the Spirit shall descend And from their inner most being A river with no end Yes, it is. 
that flows from deep within. There is a fountain that frees the soul from sin. says come come to these waters there is a land supply there is a river that Listening to Radio Yesterova. 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 Yes